for uh, remote workers. Uh, as uh, we know, a lot of people are now working from home, including myself and Mr. Kennedy, who's on the line with me. Uh, to introduce Lee, if he didn't get to our last webinar, he's our service manager and uh, also very knowledgeable, a very great guy too, has a, a lot of cool hobbies and we're very happy to have him on, on our team. So uh, if you are joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, feel free to ask questions uh, on the webinar. Uh, there's a Q&A box and uh, you're, uh, you can ask those questions or submit those questions anytime during the webinar. We'll try to get them as dressed as soon as possible. So uh, we'd like to make this as uh, you know, an easy process and uh, more of a, a back and forth throughout the webinar than just waiting at the end uh, to answer those questions so we can get them addressed along the way when they're more relevant. So I'm going to start out just uh, reading uh, one of the uh, articles I saw just to sort of get us started today, but uh, this is from the Wealth Advisor. Uh, it was published on April 8th. It says, the ongoing global pandemic is causing deep reflection about what this will mean to how our society functions. In a matter of weeks, we have seen working from home skyrocket to nearly 30% of Americans. Public transportation traffic in major cities decreased dramatically as offices, factories, and schools have shut down. In Europe and China, satellite images are showing lower levels of pollution as a result. If we wanted to experiment to see what the future of work would look like in a truly digital world, this is it. Five years ago, remote working on this scale across multiple industries would have seemed unfeasible. That signifies the huge shift that has taken place, both in terms of technology, cloud technology, apps, remote working tools, but also the infrastructure, including faster Wi-Fi and phone data. Even once the immediate crisis subsides, it seems likely there will be a lasting impact on work habits. More people will feel they, are, they can be successful working from home and may negotiate for it as a benefit with their employers. Employers, for their part, will realize that cutting costs on office space outweighs any challenges to productivity. And no doubt we'll return, there is no doubt we may not return to the old working practices that were seen in many companies who may not have had the option to work from home remotely before. What is clear is that we will need flexibility in our technology and infrastructure to cope with the change in demand from diverging work practices between remote workers and commuters that will likely bring new innovations and solutions across commercial real estate, education, information, technology, HR, and energy industries. So uh, just using that excerpt from a uh, article at the Wealth Advisor to open this up today and, and what really will start a discussion, uh, you know, segueing off that to what is really a, a pandemic or what we call a parent, what I've called a pandemic paradigm shift. So, uh, you know, looking at that, we see now that you know it has you know remote working has emerged as the new normal for a lot of companies, and and it turns out almost seventy percent of the companies out there uh, may uh, you know permanently work from home uh, going forward. Uh, I know this is something we're looking at, uh, you know, here at Abacus. Uh, we know that our, our parent company, BMSS, is also looking at it as well uh, as we consider, you know, just keeping our workforce remote. Uh, we, th we see this pan through this pandemic that uh, the internet provider we have is a lifeline for our business. And, uh, you know, and many are trying to find ways and are looking to adopting a remote workforce permanently. Uh, this time is COVID-19. Uh, the pandemic, but hey, what could it be? Uh, you know, what about the future? Could it be something else? So, these are some things uh, you know we want to consider as far as part of this pandemic paradigm shift, and and to really talk through uh, you know remote working. You know, we, we have some I think foundational elements we look at you know across our business, and that we're talking to other clients about that have uh, really figured into our equation, and and broken down into four areas. Uh, one is this people. Um, so, Lee, what type of person does it take to, to work from home? What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's there's two things I want to touch up on. One, having a re true remote workforce uh, allows you to hire outside of your region. Um, the talent pool goes up because you can grab talent from anywhere. Uh, that's one big benefit of that. But, you know, you got to have the right person there 
Uh, they've got to um, be able to be self-motivated, I think is uh, a big one. There's a lot of distractions at home. Mm -hmm. You've got to focus to stay, uh, stay motivated, uh, work independently. There's a lot of tools out there to help remedy the whole independence uh, part of it. So you still have a team um, mentality. But uh, we got there listed on your PowerPoint, you know, ask for help. The, the communication lines are important, but those people got to go out and want to uh, communicate, be self-driven to do so. Because there's really nobody there to walk into their office and say, what are you doing? Get to work. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the – having the right people and looking at the right talent is probably one of the most important uh, items when any company considers their remote workforce. You've got to look at your – your, your employees and, and you know there may be some within that group that, that just aren't set up and, and maybe they're not uh, as an individual their personality their work ethic you know is, is not set up where they can work from home efficiently so I think as managers we really have to be in tune to that uh, you know when we start looking at you know placing uh, people uh, placing employees in remote work situations uh, I think that's a great point about recruiting uh, employees um, if you are a you know 100% remote work uh, group, or, or maybe that is now a, a permanent option within your organization, that uh, you know the geographic barriers that were you know normally there for recruiting your talent uh, are no longer there. So you could actually recruit talent you know across you know the globe as long as there's an internet connection getting to that person. Uh, and they definitely could work for you, uh, you know, in, in probably a very good way. I also think this is something we're going to see uh, more and more across the board with job interviews. You know, hey, how do you feel about working from home? Is it something you have uh, your setup for? Is it something you, you feel like you can do? Uh, you know, and I, I, I agree with you. It, it does, uh, I think a lot of it does, does boil down the, to discipline. Um, you know, is uh, you know your people have to have the discipline, uh, the right kind of discipline. They got to be able to multitask. They they've got to be able to uh, sort of self manage uh, their situation uh, instead of relying on someone to push to work for them. Uh, so I think having the right talent, having the right people is definitely a foundational element. Uh, leaders need to think about what about communication. You know, uh, you know, Lee, we have some you know ways we communicate internally since we started working from home about two months ago. Uh, you know, how, what's working with that? What's not working? Do you, what do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, you know, for the communication and the technology aspect are, are one and the same, I see, or they have, they have, the technologies come along the way to, to facilitate the communication. Um, you know, we use an IM client, obviously email, um, Zoom meetings, we constantly use those. So communication is a big part of it. Um, I, 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 that's an important part, even if you're at the office, you know, you got to communicate mm -hmm. with your team. If you need help, you got to reach out. If you have problematic clients or customers, you got to, you got to speak up and try to get some help or talk amongst the, uh, uh, amongst the team, uh, whether you're at the office at or at home, but the, the tools of the technology are there and are, and are only going to improve as, as time goes on. Yeah, and I think one of one thing we found within our, our group, I mean, we have a group of tech technicians. Uh, you know, they're obviously working, uh, almost all of them working out of their homes right now. Uh, you know, and communication is extremely important between them when we're trying to serve our clients. Uh, you know, especially if there's information sharing that needs to go on. Maybe uh, someone has unique knowledge about a client that the other may not. Uh, so we, uh, we, uh, we utilize a couple ways to communicate outside the normal email and phone call, but we use Slack as a, has been a big part of our business for a long time. Uh, I say, how long have we been using Slack for about two years, three years, maybe? I would say three years. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say it's changed the way um, we've been able to operate. You know, even within the office, I changed, it changed a lot. We were able to, you know, reduce email flow. I think yeah. uh, we integrated some applications into it. So I think it has really, really enhanced our communication. Uh, but I think it, it became even more critical as we went home to work, you know, about two months ago, uh, that, you know, we constantly use Slack and on our mobile phones or on our desktops and so forth to communicate. Um, you know, we also uh, do daily check-ins, uh, you know, throughout the week. So we have, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, stand-up meetings uh, via Zoom. Uh, that have been very effective and just letting everybody sort of check in and hey what have you got going on anything you need help with 
you know, you've got to have some form of effective communication organization, uh, even if you have a remote workforce. So we use Slack, but uh, some other op- other options out there, of course, are uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have a sister company using uh, that platform. Uh, we have uh, another company uh, using Zoom as a platform for the uh, very similar uh, situation for communication. So there are a lot of different platforms out there, but I think just having that culture of communication is one of the most important thing. Okay, let's talk about our favorite technology. <laughs> how has uh, how's technology enabled us to work from home? Why is that important in a work from home scenario? We got to have all the tools to do the job, which, you know, not all companies are set up for that. Fortunately, we are. Um, and now we've kind of proved that we are. I don't think we really knew it before this because we were all used to going, you know, to the office to, to, to put in a day's work. But um, and I mentioned this before, the technology is only going to get better. It's only going to get easier. I mean, look how far home internet's come in the last, I don't know, let's say five years. Just the infrastructure and the speeds you can get alone are, are pretty remarkable, which just in time, because it, you know, allows us to all work from home and stream audio and video, um, you know, on multiple devices at one time. So, yeah, just that, like the article said, we opened up with just think about five years ago, how this scenario would have played out. And, and you know, and, you know, you look at the, the, the numbers of companies that were able to maintain their productivity through the pandemic, you know, and it was all enabled through technology. And a lot of it is through the infrastructure we have in place, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I would say, why is that a foundational element for any business wanting to do work from home? Well, you know, you've got to have up-to-date technology. I mean, you've got to have, you know, we, we prefer, you know, if we look at our, our typical home setup, you know, hey, you got to have a laptop, you know, some kind of machine that you can work on that's portable that you can, you know, move back and forth from the office or wherever you're trying to work. Uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but we'll talk about secure. Uh, and there's probably... That's probably one of the hottest topics in, in, is how do you secure your remote workers? And it's a very difficult question to answer right now. Uh, very yeah. difficult to do. Yeah, a lot of people are working from home and they are getting the work done. But is it best practices or the most secure way of getting it done? Most cases, that is not the case. Yeah, I mean, I think when we saw uh, most of our clients make the shift, probably uh, beginning of March, I, I got middle of March, we saw a huge shift. And and, and some of them were, were had the technology in place. Uh, you know, they had the, the the laptops, they had the VPN connectivity, maybe they had hosted applications, and some didn't. Uh, yeah. So it was a lot different. We saw, you know, hey, well, they they have to use you know, home their home computers to connect, and they didn't have VPN set up. Uh, multi-factor. VPN, multi-factor not set up. Uh, yeah. Some of their some of their users had never worked from home before, never used the technology it took to work from home. So. Yeah. So uh, technology is definitely a foundational element, you know, for a remote workforce. And I think, and, and lastly, company culture, uh, you know, that's a big one. Uh, yeah, this is the big one, and it's going to be the toughest one yeah. to maintain that. And I don't know if we've got the answers for that. It's something I think every company is going to struggle with in their own way. Uh, I know we, we kind of go through our struggles with it, still trying to figure it out. So uh, we, we shall wait and see how that goes. But I, you know, there'll probably be a p- piece of technology that comes out that helps with that. Uh, there's probably already stuff out there where we don't use or not aware of, but um, that's a tough one, man, because every company's different. It's not like technology and say, hey, you can do X, Y, Z. Every company's unique when it comes down to the culture mm-hmm. and how you maintain that. That's, that's, that's a tough, tough one to solve there. Yeah, I think, you know, some of the things when you think about a remote from a work remote policy that, that a company may try to develop. There's certain things uh, we talked about this in our leadership meeting, you know, coming up with a, a, a revised policy for expectations, who's eligible to work from home. Uh, you know, what kind of hours, you know, should we expect what kind of equipment and security features they need, uh, what type of communication, you know, should be made, you know, all these play into, you know, delivering, uh, you know, your service from a home environment. But when you think about that culture, I mean, I think from, as a leader, it, sometimes it's tough to overcome that. I mean, you, you, yeah. you know, the many, there are many organizations that are, are really, you know, used to having 
uh, more interaction with their employees where they can, you know, supervise them at a higher level, uh, you know, and, you know, they can see what they're working, how they're working, and, and monitor that aspect of their employees. And when you go to a work from home environment, you can't do that. Uh, you know, you, you there's a lot of, I, I think one of the biggest things that you have to have is this trust in your employees. Uh, that That's a big one. And I think, you know, just like everything else has changed, I think, you know, you better go ahead and count on your company culture not staying the same. It's going to have to evolve along with this. So what whatever you had before, um, I wouldn't plan on it being exactly like that. Uh, but I'm not saying it's going to get worse. You know, the, hopefully the thing is make it make it better. Yeah. I mean, our culture has always been, we've always really had a work from home, uh, you know, ability at Abacus. Uh, you know, our culture has always been, and within our company has been accepting of, of allowing our employees to work from home. Uh, I remember even back, you know, what, 10, 12 years ago, you know, I, I worked from home for almost three weeks uh, due to a family situation and it worked out great. Uh, you know, I was very lucky I had that opportunity to do that. And uh, I do think that is uh, having the right company culture is, you, I mean, that's probably the cornerstone of these things we talk about here as far as foundational elements. Uh, to, to work from home uh, is uh, you have to have the management and leadership. You believe it, it can be done. But I think also, what about recruiting? Uh, I, I think, hey, in the future, that's, I think your recruits who may, you know, people who apply for jobs are going to ask about working from home. Hey, can I work from home? Yep. Do, do you allow your employees to work from home? Uh, and that, that could, uh, you know, allow you to, you know, you may miss out on the very talented employee because that may not be, uh, you know, something is integrated into your culture or maybe you don't allow that. So uh, I agree every company is different, uh, but I do think it does boil down to, you know, the leadership and their outlook as far as managing their employees and the trust they have in them. Uh, but, but these are just some foundational elements. Hey, if you're a leader of a company or, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking through uh, the process of, uh, you know, what is our strategy going to be? I think these are some foundational things you need to make sure you have, uh, having the right people, having that technology, having some clear lines and effective communication, but also having the right culture there at your, at your business or organization to make that happen. So, so if we move on to the, and I promise this is not going to be a death by PowerPoint slide webinar, but uh, so let's talk about, let's, let's sort of take this, we take this from the foundation elements, but let's think about from the, the, the user perspective, you know, the actual remote worker. Uh, you know, they, they need a secure, convenient, I don't know about stress fear environment, but let's, let's walk through these four things, Lee. What about, um, I'm going to save security for last because I think that's yeah. the obvious one and one that's yeah. been beat to death. Yep. Uh, but let's just talk about setup, you know, talk about your setup. What do you, how are you set up to work from home? Um, got dual monitors, you know, pretty much my work set up here at the house. You well, know, I, I went from three monitors down to two, but you know, it really didn't make a much of a difference in my productivity, but you know, I have pretty much the same setup, which I had at the office, which was, you know, we're an IT company, so it's pretty basic. It's not like I've got file cabinets full of files or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> you know, I've got my dual monitors. My laptop is my third monitor, mouse, you know, keyboard. We don't print anything, no printer, uh, a solid internet connection. Thankfully, you know, I know not everybody's as lucky, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, I, I think that's, that's a key point. Keep it as much just like the office as you can. Uh, you know, in a room, door closed, uh, a family downstairs, you know, but, um, you know, a place where I can kind of isolate myself and focus. I know my setup is um, pretty similar to that. So I have uh, a very dedicated space uh, here uh, in my house um, in the basement. So uh, that does bring some challenges. Number one, uh, I don't get cell phone coverage down here. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty big deal uh, for me uh, when it's related to that. And uh, so I have to generally step outside or I have to uh, go outside or upstairs to actually take or make a cell phone call. Uh, but I do have a dedicated space. You know, it is somewhat, you know, uh, I guess set aside. It's actually uh, my wife's desk. So she was uh, fortunate uh, enough to allow me, and I'm thankful that she'd allow me to use her desk to, to set up and, and work from home. So I think having the dedicated space is pretty important. I'll say personally, 
you know, I started out upstairs in our living room uh, at my desk up there, and it was it was really difficult to stay focused because uh, the kids are home now, uh, you know, and uh, they're doing schoolwork. Uh, I have two uh, two uh, dogs upstairs; they're running around doing things, so uh, really made it a lot more difficult to do that. Uh, the efficiency, I think, the technology brings efficiency. Um, I don't think I could go back to one monitor. I, I think that would. <laughs> There, there's no way. <laughs> I just couldn't do that. Oh, uh, you know, what about you? Do you think you could go back to one monitor? Uh, I bet I could. Would I like it? No, not really, but I bet I could. <laughs> I've got one of those small laptops, so it'll be all really difficult uh, for me to do that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so what about webcam headset? You've got a headset, obviously. So how are you, how are you, uh, sort of community? How's that set up working for you? Yeah, I'm just using the built-in camera on my laptop. So I think it looks good. Nobody's complained about it for a month. So, um, and built-in microphone. And then I just use this to kind of block out any background noise that might be coming through. But, uh, I like the headset, um, kind of helps, I, you know, be focused and just you know not gets rid of all the background noises and stuff like that so yeah big fan yeah yeah i'm big fan. i've got some these are some noise canceling headphones so when we're doing zoom calls or even uh you know this type of uh you know work online it does make things a lot easier that i can hear actually hear what's going on a little bit better without the distraction sure. um how's your internet connection who do you have for internet out where you are you're in uh, south here, of birmingham here we go i've got char <laughs> i've got charter and i'm one of the few that will will brag on charter and you know i've never had a problem even their customer service it's been it's been great so you know i you know i can't remember the last time i called with you know an internet issue so it's been great i can't complain about it but i know charter is frowned upon by many yeah, I mean, I've got Charter out here. I'm out northeast of Birmingham near Trustful, so I've got Charter. And, and and so far, they've been good, but it is spotty at times. And I think one of the things that you probably don't experience this as much as I do, but I've got another four people plus some yeah. devices on my Internet all day long, it seems like now. So, and it helps, uh, too. About a year and a half ago, AT&T came and ran infrastructure all in the neighborhood. So I think a lot of people moved over to AT&T. So now I'm not sharing that pipe with, with the, as many people, I'll say. Yeah. And then, so I think, you know, having the good setup, at, you know, that is, that makes the work from home and remote work, I think, so much better if you just have, uh, you know, I think some of the creature comforts you normally have in the office, you know, makes it a lot easier. And you've got to have some, I think, some extra things, the webcam, a good headset, a good mic, you know, all these things will, will help you uh, have a better experience working from home. Uh, what about your day-to-day? -day? What does your day-to-day -day look like? Oh man. Well, I usually, I usually start off my today at the end of day yesterday and try to write down the stuff I want to get done uh, the following day. So that way, you know, when you're tired, you come to work, the hard work's already done. You've already got your list of to do's. You just got to start executing them. So I, I think that's pretty important, but um, you know, our, our our jobs are so dynamic. I might have that list and might not even touch it, yeah. you know, depending on what you wake up to. So, uh, I, I, it does it does it does benefit me a lot and keep me on tasks because if the initial tickets or to dos for that day that are unexpected as they diminish, I can get to work on that and not have to question what I'm going to do or what do I do next. So, do you have a routine? Do you follow the same routine you get up? I do. For, for, yeah. for, okay. for most times, you know, I take advantage of working from home a, a little bit, maybe get that extra, you know, 30 minutes of sleep or so, but I still wake up, shower, you know, run through the same routine I do in the morning and, and, and just, you know, either get to work a little bit earlier or just take, take a little extra time getting ready in the morning. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of try to keep to the routine. I, I still wake up at the same time regardless. Yeah, I think I think I think those kind of data things are important. Where you know, if you're going to work from home, I think you have to stick to some type of routine that you were used to having when you worked in the office. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. Uh, I'm like you. I get up. I still take a shower. You know, I still uh, you know I'll get my coffee. You know, I, I follow the same routine every day, and I think that helps me get prepared for the day. I did. I did wear a collared shirt today, so that yeah, was, I saw that. Well, that was kind know. of out of my home routine. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I think one of the biggest things we've seen, is, you know, getting dressed is, is one of the, or how you dress is, has been, has changed dramatically. Obviously, I'm just in a, you know, t-shirt, shorts, and some slides today. So we, we, I, I, I'm seen, not business casual. <laughs> we've seen everything from tank tops to, yeah. you know, a collared shirt, pressed shirt. So, but, uh, but I do think that's an important thing. If you're going to work from home, you know, you know, set yourself some regular hours. Uh, you know, stick to it. Take breaks. I, I think you got to get outside. I have to go outside occasionally and just sort of get some fresh air. You know, I, you know, working from home is great, but it, it does. Uh, you don't get that. I guess you don't get to move around as much as you do at the office. Maybe you'll, you know, because I know you're. You, you uh, your office is next to mine. I know you get sick of me walking in your office just to run things past you and. And uh, uh, so, I mean, we, we miss that, I think. And, and I think that naturally breaks up our day. So I think, you know, yeah. if you're going to be successful, you've got to have a routine. Yeah. You know, set your hours. Um, and uh, I think ground rules for people in your space is important, too. You have to – I mean, I'm not home. I have, you know, three kids at home. I have a wife at home, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it looks like they're going to be, uh, you know, not going back to school. So, you know, I have to really uh, work with them about, hey, you know, I've got a Zoom call. I've got, you know, I'm trying to get some work done about them being in the space. So, I mean, I think you do need to have ground rules for that, you know. What, if, what as, about, like, one thing I struggle with about, you know, I find myself getting to work a little bit earlier. Eh, I'll yeah. work through lunch, you know. Oh, I'll yes. I'll still work, you know. Then before you know it, you're, you're working nine, ten-hour days and not even meaning to. Well, that is statistically, uh, in some of the research I did in preparation for this webinar, statistically, that is the case with most teams or most employees. They find they work longer hours, uh, they work through lunch and at, at home more than they do at the office. Yeah. I, think, I think part of that is that commute. You don't have to worry about that commute. Uh, yeah. you don't, I mean, because one of the drivers for me to get an off a certain time is, hey, I don't want to get stuck in traffic. Uh, you know, so I think yeah. not having that to deal with and to think about allows you to, I think, you know, work, uh, longer hours. And plus if it's, if it's in your house, it's there, you don't, you know, you don't have to go anywhere to work. It's downstairs. Right. So, uh, I think that could be a benefit, but I think that also can, uh, can be a, a detriment to working from home as well as, yeah, you gotta uh, be careful with it. Yeah. I think you got to set those regular hours, stick to it. I think that's an important thing. You made, uh, a, I th you made a good point too. You're not eager to get out of there to go beat traffic or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's a good point. And, uh, you know, I think one thing, don't be hard on yourself. Uh, yeah. you know, we, we tend to want to try to apply office rules to work from home. And I think, Hey, you know, I'm at home, I have my kids here, you know, and sometimes my son wants to come and show me what he's done for school. And, you know, it, you know, I would say accept those moments, you know, be it, you know, you're here with your family. Uh, don't be hard on yourself about taking a few minutes to, to talk, spend some time with your kids. I mean, I've taken a break and also throwing football with my son. So, uh, you know, take, take time. Don't be hard on yourself about keeping that work schedule. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it does uh, give you some opportunity to, to be with your family during the day. I mean, you still need to get your work done. No doubt about that. But, but uh, don't be too hard on yourself because it does take, I think, a lot of effort to do be more disciplined in what you're doing. Uh, so what about um, communication? Uh, I think of all the things we've struggled with, communication has been great. But I think I think a lot of our team miss that interaction between individuals. I mean, wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, we're fortunate, you know. Um, our team is like a group of friends, you know. We all get along and, you know enjoyed hanging out if you, if you will and uh yeah i think uh, i think the guys missed that i certainly do um so yeah that's another one of those things it's, it's a tough thing and how are we going to solve it i don't i don't know you know yeah i, I think that's so we, we've been talking about that in our, in our, our leadership meetings about you know how are we gonna you know going forward you know how are we gonna try to you know show up in person or, or work together uh, in person and, you know, maybe come to, you know, how are we going to come back to the office? What is that going to look like? I'm sure there's a lot of companies have that same question right now. You know, how are they going to approach that, uh, you know, based on the guidelines and based on their own culture uh, and also based on employees. You know, we did a, we did a poll out to our employees and we said, Hey, you know, what do you guys, you know, f you know, what do you feel about, how do you feel about working from home? And, and I think it, uh, it worked very well. You know, I think we do a good job of communicating. Uh, you know, I think, I think when you're remote, uh, I think it, you got to be positive about it. I think it's easy to feel like yourself. You're on an island working from home. Sometimes it, uh, you sort of lose some of that uh, positive energy you may get from your coworkers. 
Uh, I think you do need to communicate more, you know, at home, uh, you know, with colleagues and clients. Uh, what about showing up for meetings? I don't think we've experienced this, but I've seen this somewhat in practice, sort of in a jokingly manner, but, uh, you know. Well, you know, show, showing up to meetings, there's a lot more meetings, it seems like. Yes, you got to keep the communication like level up some, <laughs> some way. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. I, I've never heard. I, I guess we don't have that problem, so I really don't know how to touch up on it. I mean, yeah, a, lot of people, a lot of people are known for ditching their meetings or something. Well, I think it's just, you know, it's easy to sit there uh, on a Zoom meeting and you're just sort of there. Oh, you're you're you know, present, but you're not you're present. You're present, but not present. I mean, uh, I know I got, I've got three butters in front of me, so I can, you know, sit on a Zoom meeting and I can actually work, you know, what is. So, but I do think it is, hey, you need to show up for your meetings. If you're going to be in a Zoom meeting, uh, have that time and, and participate. Uh, yeah, I think probably, that'll help. You're, you're probably there for a reason. <laughs> yeah, you probably want your input. I would hope so. And, uh, you know, lastly about socializing, I know we've done some virtual meetups. We have a team lunch that will sort of virtualize. That's, that seemed to work pretty good, you know, just to get everybody get online via Zoom and hang out. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's sort of fun at first, but I think we're all eager to get back uh, into the office and have more of that face-to-face -face communication and see each other uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, all right, I've saved the best for last year. What about security? I mean, you know, I, I don't know what – what are your what are your top three issues when you talk to clients about securing their uh, remote office? All right, number one, and I know we we've, we've talked about this a ton, so I'm sorry if everybody's already heard this, but personal computers, no no, yeah, big no no. Okay, that's number one. Um, open RDP to the world, so you can just remote desktop it to a server minus the VPN. No no, big no no. And, uh, you know, if you're using VPN, good. Put some multi-factor authentication on that. Yeah, I think those are, are a great thing. I think those are, we, we've seen all of those three in the past two or three months, you know, working with the organizations. Yep. Uh, we saw a lot of, uh, some companies did not have laptops that they could send home with their employees. Uh, so they basically allowed them to use their home machines. And now that is becoming a bigger uh, a bigger topic. I, I've had at least two conversations with clients about, hey, how should I handle this? Uh, and, you know, and, and companies do in IT, they really need to think about, you know, as far as technology, it's going to change. So whatever you're doing right now, you know, if you want to do it right and secure, most likely it's going to change. You're going to change the way you're, you're doing things, whether you go hosted or put in new security technologies, um, but be, be ready for change because it's it's coming. Yeah, I think that's the, the next step is the, you know, what is going to be the strategy? You know, is, is I know we've talked to several companies who are going to make working from home, you know, a bigger part or permanent part of their strategy going forward, yeah. you know, which is going to cause them to have to invest in some different types of technologies, maybe change the way yeah. uh, they're doing things in their business, uh, you know, and, and I think what some of the things that, we saw sort of that, that initial jump, you know, to remote workforce. And now they're like, hey, this is working out pretty well. Because I even know some people who were totally against working from home. They've now said, hey, yeah, you being one of them, <laughs> that, uh, hey, it's worked out pretty good. Maybe, you know, they've even found in some cases they're even more productive having their yeah. workforce at home, uh, which is, you would think, the contrary. But that's actually the truth. But we, we really have to think about, well, how are we going to can secure that remote worker now? They're not within the sort of the, the castle walls of the corporate network. You know, right. they're not behind a firewall. Uh, maybe we can't manage their devices and their activity as closely as we need to to keep them secure. So, uh, you know, a couple of things. I really think, you know, personally, a lot of that's going to roll down to two things. One, it's going to be the endpoint. You know, that machine that they've taken out of the office or they have to work at the office is going to be, how do you secure that machine and what do you do to secure it? And the second thing is is the security awareness training, you know, giving that employee information they need uh, to make good decisions uh, about the security of their home network, about the security of what they're doing, uh, so they can uh, be part of that security solution going forward. Uh, some things I listed here were just like software updates. Uh, you know, yeah, how, many, how many times each week we see software updates, just, you know, hundreds of them released uh, that have to be applied. And I think that's extremely important is you have to have those software updates applied to that machine at home. 
uh, you know, on a routine basis. Hall machines don't always have that uh, happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't have control of that endpoint, it could cause a problem. You have um, no way to guarantee it. You don't. I mean, you can set it to always download, but you really don't know if it's really going to happen or not. Right. Uh, you can't monitor it. You can't manage it. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, you know, enhanced detection response agent. This is something sort of new, uh, at least in the last six to ten months that have uh, we've started seeing more uh, of in the market. But that is uh, it's sort of I, I look at it as a as an antivirus agent, but it's at a, at a much higher level using more advanced technology uh, to bring about more uh, detection and response capability to the endpoint. So we've always looked at AV antivirus. Hey, you got to have antivirus. Uh, antivirus is great. It does a lot of good, um, but this is sort of a, a next version of that. The you yeah. know where you can actually the key thing on, yeah the key thing respond. on there is the, the, is the response to it. Yeah, not only will it detect it, it's going to quarantine it, take the machine offline, um, you know, possibly shut it down. Uh, you know, it's got a list of capabilities they can do other than just you know we're used to the detect, quarantine, end of story. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, be able to sandbox stuff and report back, so it, it's like a, it's like AV uh, on steroids, and, and it can it can save you. Uh, and then security awareness training. I know we do security awareness training here at Avid because we use the the Nub4 platform. Uh, you know how important is that to to the end users, to your employees that it may be working from home? Uh, yeah, well, it, like you mentioned before, it's extremely important. Just just that they can recognize and start following some best practices. Uh, you know, knowledge, knowledge is king, always has been. We get calls all the time that I just like beg people or think, I can't thank them enough. I'm like, oh, you know, this <laughs> two minute phone call saved us five days of you know, possible data loss or data breach, you know, just by you calling and asking us. So, uh, yeah, we, hey, if you don't know, we ask the question, but I think having that, having, especially we, we've seen how threats have changed so much you know, in relation to the pandemic, you know, we see a lot more phishing emails uh, related to COVID-19 or we see uh, email scams or, or financial scams related to the government programs that the stimulus programs that have come out with the Small Business Association. Uh, you know, all those have just increased dramatically. And I think also adversaries know that people are working from home yep. and, you know, they're probably much easier targets or softer targets, so to speak. Uh, the normal because they're they're not in that corporate environment. They're not behind all that, uh, you know, your intrusion detection system, your, uh, you know, their internal detection system, your firewall, all those things may not be uh, protecting that endpoint now because and, of that. And email is the most vulnerable yes. and the most scary and most commonly compromised, you know, and, and I know everybody's working remote and it's convenient to email stuff back and forth, but keep in mind that it is extremely vulnerable and, uh, you know, don't put any secure personal information mm -mm. in email. And I know people do it every day. I see it all the time and it just scares the heck out of me. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenges about having, uh, one of the challenges is how do you transfer data back and forth with your yeah. colleagues that you're working? How do you collaborate on on the information, how do you share that information? I think that's a that's a big, big topic uh, that is hard to unpack because then you're starting to involve business processes and how, right. and, and then you got data security policies, data privacy policies, all that comes into play. Uh, and all to and, and and this is sort of what we're going to, we're going to talk about in our next webinar is you know all these platforms out there that facilitate that kind of transfer of information. That right. hey, when everybody went went home to work. They just said, hey, I'm going to use whatever works for me. I'm going to use Dropbox or I'm going to use Teams or I'm going to use Slack. And and you have multiple people in your organization adopting all these free-for-use technologies, yep. you know, to try to facilitate business. And, and now, the you know, the, the organizations in some ways have lost control uh, over their data. So that's that's something extremely important. So um, just a couple of basic questions I, I think we'll use to, to wrap it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, one of them, you know, as far as a setup for work from home, you know, what, what I think is, what do we think we need the minimum setup is to work from home? What do you think about that? What are some minimum things you probably need? Well, I don't know. That's, uh, I guess it's kind of unique to the company, but I obviously internet access, um, 
you know, obviously a, a, a endpoint of some type, whether it be desktop or a laptop, and um, you know, a secure way of getting business done. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about it. You know, you got to have a secure, I mean, a good broadband internet connection. I think yep. that's that's the big thing. You got to have good secure internet. If you don't have that, then this can be tough to. Um, to work from home, internet's a lifeline for your business now. You got to have that, you know. I think you got to have uh, a, hopefully a corporate laptop or, or machine that's managed. That means that, hey, it's centrally managed for all software updates. Simply centrally managed for, uh, you know, malware and virus protection. Uh, what about and even configuration? You know, you got to have there's well, things I wanna, on. I want to touch up on this too. We talk about internet connection and stuff like that. One thing we see all the time right now, or somewhat of time. Is people using MiFi spots connected to the 4G network? Yeah, and it and it it'll do in a pinch. I would not rely on it. It's not that dependable. Um, it's going to get better. It's one of those things that's going to change. They're going to roll the 5G out. Oh yeah, and you'll be able to work from a tablet from anywhere. You know, uh, so so that's coming. But like I said, there's there's going to be so many changes coming, and it's going to obviously there's going to be entrepreneurs targeting. The remote workforce because there's a huge need out there for it. Yeah, I think the the five G rollout, you know, is is going to be uh, an amazing advancement in technology for connectivity. Do you think uh, it'll go as far as eliminating home internet and will everything will be just wireless off the five G network? Well, I think that's going going to really work with the carriers because you know the carriers are sort of the mindset to five G is really for business use, uh, okay. so it's not really for home internet. But I definitely could see us having. Uh, that you know you could have your own 5g 5g address space yeah. uh, you know where hey where abacus has its own 5g address space and it's it works anywhere we go you know and, and it's a private address space you I mean it's just like your your connection at the office except it's cellular and wireless I think yeah. we could see that kind of a rollout and and I've seen it seen 5g in uh, in action and, and it is fast I mean we're talking gigabits gigabytes of data transferred in seconds. I mean, nice. it, it will definitely revolutionize uh, some industries, and I think enable, uh, you know, just further enable uh, people to work uh, remotely. Um, one of the question about policy considerations, and this is something, uh, I've had this conversation with a lot of different clients lately uh, about work from home policies, and I think there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind when you think about that. and. Uh, one thing that came up is, uh, you know, that we're we're looking at uh, is, you know, from time to time, you know, we issue we issue all of our employees' laptops, and and there's sort of been an understood that hey, that laptop can use be used for roast, a personal use and home use on occasion if that's the way as a benefit, um, and I think we may have to move away from that. You know, that hey, if you're going to be a work from home scenario, then hey, that laptop needs to be used only for work purposes. And, and I think that makes a lot of sense nowadays because most all of us have cell phones, uh, you know, smartphones, tablets. Uh, so the need to use our, our, our laptop for anything outside of work has really been eliminated. Uh, if I want to stream Netflix, I do it from my phone or my tablet. I don't do it from my work laptop. So I think that's something... Uh, from a policy standpoint, uh, businesses need to decide how they're going to approach the use of, uh, you know, company-owned assets uh, such as a laptop. Uh, I do think there need to be some guidelines about, uh, you know, who's eligible to work from home and if it makes sense for that person, uh, you know, going forward. Also, uh, I think we've got to set uh, expectations as far as working from home. You know, what does that look like? Uh, what are your hours going to be about, uh, you know, looking at uh, attending meetings? Uh, we, we've got to decide, you know, what kind of policy you're going to put in place that. And I do think we have to have a more uh, robust policy around security considerations, uh, mainly how you connect to the, to the office remotely, how you communicate data that you may have or have the ability to, to – uh, access and, and what you can communicate. So I do think there's going to be a, uh, of all the things I think we're going to have to see changes to a lot of the policies and procedures, uh, you know, around working remotely. So uh, those are some considerations I think everyone needs to have as a company. So um, I'm going to give everyone one last chance to, answer, to ask some questions if you have any. Uh, you know, I'm going to 
uh, close out with this uh, last side, just talk a little bit about our team. Uh, so if you've got any questions about, uh, you know, anything we talked about today or need to get in touch with us, uh, you can uh, obviously get in touch with uh, myself. Uh, my email address is sitting right there, and I'd be happy to talk to you and continue these conversations with you. Samantha Knight, who's our uh, marketing sales development rep, she's uh, she's also available, and then Caroline Lusher, who uh, also works in business development. These are uh, you know, some folks you can get in touch with if you've got some further questions or maybe you uh, need some assistance with anything that you may have uh, related to technology. So I uh, don't see any more questions out there, Lee. So uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, we'll, close, we'll close out. Thanks for your conversation. Thanks for those who attended. This webinar will be recorded. We'll be putting it out on social media. So uh, if you have and maybe you missed something, maybe you weren't able to attend, you can always catch it there. Uh, we'll have our next webinar, I believe, on the 26th. We'll talk about free to use software. So we'll talk about things like, uh, you know, setting up a, a free Teams account. Maybe you set up a free Slack account. Maybe your employees are using a free Dropbox account. Hey, are these programs safe? Uh, do you want to use them? Can you use them? Uh, you know, and what does that look like? And how could it affect your organization? So we'll, we'll check in on that next week. So I uh, hope everyone stays healthy. Hope you have a great rest of your week. And, uh, you know, please get in touch with us or anything we can do for you. If not, we'll have a, y'all have a good one.